Welcome to my first video on YouTube. I'm Maria and here I share all I know about baking and cake decorating. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make beautiful red poppies using whipped cream and palette knives. Let's take a look at what we need for our work today. So the first one is obviously our palette knives. We are going to be using these three today. Um, these two are primarily used for making or shaping the petals and this one is going to be uh, as help with placement. This is a turntable, a makeshift one, uh, similar to your cake turntable and it helps to place petals from different directions. For the purpose of today's demo, I'm using a cake cart rather than a cake just for ease of use. That's our acrylic boats which I find it easy to use for um, mixing colors or picking up cream. And here's regular whipped cream, any non-dairy whipping cream. And like I always say, it's this is one place where you can be happy that you kind of over whipped your cream. Just to check on the consistency, what you can do is press down like this. When you pull back up, there should be a little bit of a resistance and that would mean it's just the right consistency. Don't worry about the air bubbles because it's going to um, go off when we smoothen it anyways and I'm making bright red poppies today and using these colors um, color mist and sugar in and they help give really lovely colors it helps to have an idea about the layout that we are going to be doing on our cake so we could probably sketch it out first we plan to do three types of flowers um, one would be a bud and then a side view and then one from a top angle. So I'm going to start with the bud here and then create the petals of the side view. So poppies are known to have really large frilly petals, um, long squiggly stems and uh, lovely pointed leaves. When you actually start your sculpture painting, you would start with the greenery first. The foliage kind of helps fill it up. This is the side view, that's the bud. And here's where we would have the full bloom or the, the focal point of our piece. It's not really necessary to draw this out but then having an outline or maybe even a picture which you can probably uh, check on your phone or have a printout of um, helps you in much better planning on how you can position or how you can frame your um, canvas on the cake. So there's your outline almost done. Now you know how much of space you have left and you can plan for um, where you want to have your writing. Okay, so now that's done. We can move on to our sculpture. Let's start with our whipped cream. I'm going to take a huge blob first and then section it as needed. Um, we're going to start with red first, so I'll take a bit and then add a few drops of color mist. It's always best to add color a little at a time so you get a chance to um, analyze the depth of the color. So here I've used some more of the color mist, a little bit of the copper red and given it a good mix until I was happy with the tone and shade. And then we move on to the next which is going to be green so I usually make a couple of shades of green here we're going to be using four shades I'm going to start with leaf green mix it in first and then section that into four different parts and add in the other colors so that I can mix and match as required let's mix in some maroon now um, a little bit of copper red and maroon. It does look a little dirty, but it gives good dimension to our red. So there we have our colors. There you have red and copper red. That's a mix of maroon and copper red. White to lighten all of these. You have chartreuse, leaf, dark and mint green. So all of these together is going to give a good look to our picture. Now that we have our colors ready, we can move over to our canvas. We're going to be using um, the small knife mostly. This is the one. 
and it's more than enough to make small to medium large petals. So I'm going to show you some basic strokes first. So let's gather some cream, just a few different shades of green. Don't worry about blending it in fully because the variations give a nice depth to your leaves. Let's take a look at the best way to hold the knife for these petals. Now this is flat on the board and this is 90 degrees to the left. That's 90 degrees to the right. And this is a 45 degree angle or a half angle that we're looking for. Let's try picking up the cream now. So you start from one end holding it at a 45 degree angle and then can, can you see how it's built up there? So just keep picking up an, a little bit but making sure that you do not have a, a lip coming out. So it's a mound that you're looking for. So once that's done you can just press it down gently and firmly pull away. Now for the left side you do the same you pick a little cream place it press pull away and now for the right side you want the cream coming out from this side so you start picking up cream from the right as well it's just short firm strokes all you need to ensure is that you cut off any cream coming out from the other side and you repeat press pull away that's easy enough right once that's done you can go back and just smoothen out the ridges that you see there so it it appears to be one seamless leaf now if your cream is drying out, just use a little bit of water, dip your knife in water and smooth it out. So before moving on to our imaginary cake, let's take a look at our template. So this is the layout. You have some leaves here, here and here and we can place it around this periphery. Just like we did earlier, you start by picking up some cream and you pick up both ways, like from both sides, because you're aiming for a mound behind the knife. So you pick it up and can you, can you see the mound? Go in, place your knife down, gently and firmly pull away. Now you want the next one from the left, so you start picking up cream from the left side. So again short firm strokes, just make sure that you don't have any excess coming out like this. Just cut, cut it off if it's coming out of the side and make sure you have a mount bring it back here, press down and pull away. And you do the same for the right side. Repeat these same steps as many times as you think is necessary until you form enough leaves to give a full um, cheerful look to your canvas and remember to smooth it down before it dries up so that it, it has an illusion of being one single leaf rather than uh, a combination of strokes.
now for the pretty part, the petals. So I'm going to take some of this red onto this um, palette here and give it a good mix just to smoothen it out. Remember to keep a moist towel handy to keep cleaning your knives in between. Now flatten the cream a little bit. This helps to pick up the cream even in an even manner. Remember this is flat, this is 90 and this is 45. If you need petals on the left you start picking from the left and if you want it on the right you start picking from the right. Let's start picking the cream. So you go forth with short firm strokes. The more you pick the larger petal you create. Look at that frilly back in a triangular shape and you have a smooth front side. Now how do you place this? So you just touch down and pull away. Now this petal can easily be manipulated to stay in whichever direction you like. So you can always lift it up or curl it over, push it forward, lay it sideways, anything that would suit the kind of flower that you're making. Let's pick from the right now. Again, you smooth it out and start off with short firm strokes. And remember, the more strokes you have, the more bigger and frillier your petals would be. And again, touch down and pull away. Let's clean up before we start with the star of the show. I'm going to get some of the red cream onto this plate here. Um, a little bit of red and a little bit of the maroon as well. good mix spread it out evenly and start picking the cream I'm going to start off with short strokes gently firmly and keep going until I'm happy with the size of the petal that I'm doing so since we're doing the bud um, it's not going to be too big or too large let's have the bud somewhere around here like we discussed earlier just touch down and pull away you can then curl it over place it into position and this is how it's gonna look not very pretty right now but let's just wait until the end and you'll see how it turns out now for the other side now this time you pick from the right and remember to have this petal slightly taller because it needs to overlap the, the first bud that we placed. To release this petal, we are going to take the help of another palette knife. So you place it into position, support another palette knife onto the side and gently slide out. You can then press it into position, have the bud open or closed, fold or unfold, based on how you would like it to look. Now there's two ways of placement, um, as I'd like to call it. One is a direct placement and the other is a transfer placement. So I'm going to show you one of each for the, pet for the sepals. So you pick the cream like we did so far, not too big because it's a sepal. And this is going to be a direct placement. So you just go in, touch down where you would like to position it and then gently pull away. And once you pull away, you can always adjust the angle at which the sepal is placed. The other would be a transfer or an indirect placement where you create the sepal or petal on your palette knife, place it on your palette board 
lift it up in a different direction or angle that you desire it to be in and then place it on your canvas. So here I'm picking up the cream. I'm going to touch down on the palette board itself. Remove any excess cream and you gently pick it up from behind. And you're going to use the help of the second palette knife to guide the first one in placing the sepal in position. Moving on to the blooms now. I'm going to be using the next bigger size knife just to demo the size of the petal. So we follow the same principle of picking the cream. As you can see, that's a lovely smooth triangular shaped petal there with a nice frilly back. Let's place it here. You just go in, touch down and gently pull away. You can then kind of turn it over just to give it a bit of lift because movement in petals creates a very realistic looking flower. So the more you can give it lift and uh, manipulate it into different directions the more realistic it would look. We will be using a combination of direct and indirect placements for these petals. As you can see the first two were direct placements. Now this one which I'm going to put into the middle of those two is an indirect placement. Now we get some green for the center. I'm going to work with chartreuse and leaf green so you can just take a little blob of it and lift it up with the back side press it down lift it up with the back again press it down and keep doing that until it forms a somewhat smooth ball now once that's created you can just lift it up and place it into the center of the flower that would form the the center where we will later on be piping the stamens as well so that's done now back to the reds so it's it's pretty repetitive um, you just need to know when to do a direct placement and when to do an indirect placement now for the lower parts of the this bloom we will need it to be curling inwards so I'm going to be doing mostly indirect placements so you create a petal lift it up in the direction that you want to place it in and then ease it into position and create movement as would be suitable for that particular position. open bloom here and it's the same procedure as we did so far a combination of direct and indirect placements petals as large or as small as you would like them to be so keep picking the cream according to what you need when you're doing indirect placements make sure to take the help of an additional palette knife preferably a long one as it helps with minimal damage so here we're making the center again by rolling a little ball of cream Keep picking up and smoothing it out until you're satisfied with the shape and then place it into the center. We will need a couple more petals um, to complete this flower.
have you tried sculpture art yet? I know it does seem to be a lot of work compared to, uh, for example, if you were to pipe the flowers instead, which would of course save you a lot of time. But then there is a little joy, some kind of uh, like a sense of achievement, you know, when, when you are able to sculpt each petal into place. I'd love to know how your experience has been with sculpture painting and how easy or how difficult it was, you know, to drop in your experience in the comments below. And if there's any way I can help you with experiencing this amazing art, I'd love to. As you can see, it's the same procedure that's being repeated over and over again until um, you complete your picture. I do hope you guys will give it a try and, and tell me all about how it's turned out. Once the main parts are done, you could use the leftover cream, um, particularly the green. Um, just put it into a piping bag, snip off the ends and use that to pipe the finer details, particularly stem, sorry, stems or trellises or um, all of the finer details. taking the remaining green, adding a few drops of black to it to make a kind of a really dark green, almost black, and then use that to pipe the stamens around the center part of the poppies. We're almost done. So what do you think? Good? I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do hit subscribe so you are notified when I upload again. See you in the next one.